Hi there. Let me show you how to write the B-Day program. So, first of all, press the program button. Press the right arrow twice to select new. We're going to create a new program. Press the enter key. The alpha lock is on. That's why the cursor is flashing with a capital A. So we're going to name this B-Day. So look at the letters on your keys. Here is the B, D, A, Y. And press enter. So each line of the program begins with a colon. So the first thing I want to do is take the number 1 and assign it to the variable n. This is exactly the program that's on the back of your handout. So I'm going to type a 1. I'm going to press the store button. And now I need to find the variable n. So to get that, I have to hit the alpha key first so that I can call up my variable. And here it is. Here is the n. I'm pointing to it on the screen. That's the first line of the program. Press enter and you get a new colon. Just like if we were writing a little program on the home screen, we use the colon to glue commands together on the home screen. Here, we're just using the colon to indicate a new line of the program. Now we need to put in our condition, and we need a while statement. So to get the while statement, press the program button, and there it is. Under the CTL, that stands for control, under the CTL commands, press the down arrow to option number 5, or you can just press the 5. Press enter, we'll bring the while command, and I want n to be less than or equal to 22. That's the condition that I want. So again, alpha button and n. I have to get the n in there. The less than or equal to symbol is under test right here. So you have to press the second button and then the math button and that will bring up the testing operators. We want number six. So you can just down arrow to six or you can just type the six. It will bring that in. I want n to be less than or equal to 22. So there is that command. Press enter. So the next line isn't too hard to write. I want to check to see if list one, so second one, and the entry that I want is entry number n plus 1. So I have to open my parentheses. I have to put in my n plus sign 1. Close the parentheses. I want to see if that is equal to list 1 entry number n. So again, I need a testing operator in there. I need the equals sign. So once again, that's the second button and the math button, the equal sign is option number one, so I'll press enter. And I want to see if that's equal to list one, entry n. Second, one. There's list one. Open your parentheses, put in the n again. Close the parentheses. Now, this is a test. I'm looking to see if two values are equal to each other. Remember, if they are equal to each other, this equation is evaluated as true. If they are not equal to each other, this equation is evaluated as false. A true equation is represented by the number one. A false equation is represented by the number zero. So I want to store those values into list two so that I can add them up. So I have to press the store button, and now I want to bring up list two. Second, two, but I have to say where to put it into list two. I'm going to put it into entry n, so open my parentheses again. Alpha, n, close the parentheses. So there's the most complicated command. That's line C, or the third line of the program. Press enter. The fourth line of the program takes n and increases it by 1. So after I've done this check on the third line of the program, in order to get ready to check the next line, I have to take the value of n and increase it by 1. Alpha, log button if you will, that brings up the n. I have to add 1 to it. So I'm going to store n plus 1. That value, I'm going to store it back into n. There it is. There's the fourth line of the program. Press enter. So these are the only lines of the program. 
It's only the third and fourth lines of the program that I want repeated while this condition is true. So I need to tell the calculator where to stop doing the repeating. That's what the end command does. So to get to the end command, press the program button again. And there it is. Once again, under CTL, under control options, the end command is command number seven. So I'll just type seven. There it is. Press enter. And now I'm ready to do my last operation. I have to take the sum of list two, but I, I don't want to just take the sum. I want to display the sum. I want to be able to see the sum. So go to the program button again and notice instead of CTL, which stands for control, IO right here, this stands for input and output. If I want to display something, that's an example of output. So I need to press the right arrow. Here are all of the different input and output commands. I want command number three. That is the display command, D-I-S-P. There it is, option number three. And literally all I want to display is the sum of list two. So to get to the sum command, I need to press the second button and the stat button. So this is not an operation, or under OPS, those are the operations we can perform on lists. This is actually something mathematical that I want to do to the list. So we'll press the right arrow twice. There is the sum option, option number five. And I want to take the sum of list two. Second, two, close the parentheses. So there's the end of the program. I know this seems kind of funny, but you don't have to save it. It is automatically saved. So if you are ready to actually try executing a simulation of this program, what you need to do is get back to the home screen. Trust me, it's already saved. So I'm going to press the second button and the mode button. That will quit to the home screen. So my program is saved, don't worry. So let's take a look then to actually execute this simulation then all at once so that I don't actually have to take the time to go into the list and inspect to see if I have at least one pair of individuals with the same birth date. So random integer, I want to generate birth dates, 1 to 365. I want to generate 23 of them, just like we did on the front, store it into list 1. I'm going to sort it ascending, and then I'm going to glue to it this command. I'm going to have the calculator execute the command program B day. So when this entire line is executed, I will get on the home screen a number. That number is the sum of list two. And that's really all I need to make this decision. Is there not a shared birth date in this sample of 23? Or is there a shared birth date in this sample of 23? So let's actually go and execute it here on the home screen. I'll go a little faster since hopefully you've done this before. Under probability... We'll go to the random integer command, press enter, 1, comma, 365, comma, 23. We're going to store this into list 1. Now, I'm going to glue another command to that. So I have to hit the alpha button and the colon. That's the decimal point. So now I need to sort my list. That's very important. So second stat button, go over to ops, and I want to sort ascending. So I'll choose my first option. I'll press enter. I'm going to sort ascending list number one, second one, close my parentheses. Now the last command to glue to this is the program command. So we're literally going to tell the calculator, after you've done the sorting, go execute the program automatically and check for me. So alpha button, decimal point. There's the colon. And to pull up the program, press the program button. And notice EXEC stands for execute. What I want to execute is the B-Day program. So I'm going to press enter. So there it is, program B-Day. If I press enter now, it will automatically generate my random birth dates for the 23 individuals in my sample. It will sort them and it will check to see if there's at least one pair of shared birth dates. Press enter. There you go. So I got a value of two. So that tells me that if I go inspect the list, which the cool part is you don't have to do this. I'm going to do it so that you can see what happened. I got a two. So I'm going to press the stat button and I'm going to press enter. So let's see if I can find my two pairs of individuals. Let's see. I'm looking for a pair of numbers that match. 
There it is. There's the first pair. There are two individuals here with a birth date number of 247. And there are two individuals here with a birth date number of 312. There you go. I didn't have to take the time to go and inspect this list because the program did it for me automatically. So take a look. I'm going to go press second mode. I'm going to go back to the home screen. So let's go look at the handout then. What I'm going to have you do then is to run this command 50 times. So understand what I just saw. I have already done one run of this command. There was in that first sample at least one shared birth date. In fact, there were two, but that's okay. There was at least one, so I'm good to go. I will tally that up as one, and I'm going to go back and run the command again. So notice to run the command again, all you have to do is press the enter key. Ah, this time I didn't get any shared birth dates. So on my handout, no shared birth dates. Back to the calculator, run the command again. Ah, again, I got two. So once again, I would tally that up. I'm going to ask you to tally this then a total of 50 times. So together you should have a total of 50 tally marks here, and then you can use those to actually estimate the probability from the front. So remember that probability should be written as what you want over what's possible. And you should know what's possible. There are 50 trials here, and what you want is a sample of 23 where at least one pair shares a birth date. So I want you to write your final answer as both a fraction and as a decimal. Your decimal should end up being to the hundreds place. Uh, it should be two places because we're dividing by 50. And that's the birthday problem simulation. Good luck.